Life's hardest choices are the ones that force you to question your own moral code. My choice has led me here, standing against those I once called brothers. History may brand me traitor, rebel, or renegade. is that I followed my own creed. Well, that was, um, I guess that was a trailer, probably the most boring of all the ones I've seen. Like, it, like okay, but, well, okay, but anyway, welcome back to Assassin's Creed Ranked, everybody. Uh, I'm Raven, and again, joining me is my brother Lark. Howdy, Pilgrim. Uh, we're taking a look at all the Assassin's Creed games and putting them on a tier list to decide which ones are the best, mm -hmm. which ones are the worst, that kind of thing. And it takes time to do these, you know, because we play through each one. And just today, uh, we are now going to be talking about Assassin's Creed Rogue. A very interesting game where you play as a assassin trader who turns to the Templars, and it's the first game where you run around almost exclusively killing assassins. And I had a uh, low expectations for this game. Uh, Lark, you were a little bit more, you know, excited about it because you of the gameplay at least, right? Oh, absolutely. But we'll, we'll get into gameplay a little bit later. But absolutely. So for those of you who um don't know how this works um go back and watch our previous videos they're all available on the channel to go see we grade each of the games based on four criteria story history gameplay and characters and then we take those four uh, average it out and that puts it on the tier list so you know what let's not waste any time uh, lark you were the one who played this so why don't you get us rolling uh tell us about the story of assassin's creed rogue okay so basically it's a uh, sort of a uh basically the years in between uh like when Haytham shows up on the continent and when connor takes over uh and the assassins Creed. basically the event it's between the events of assassin's creed 4 and assassin's creed 3 now you play as shea patrick cormac an old irish man who likes to come around in the colonial right and join the assassins at a young age now Shay, we'll get we'll talk more about him and his neuroses in character. But basically, he is he uh, was working for the assassins during uh, their height when Achilles is the mentor of the colonial right, and everything seems to be working relatively smoothly. And his job is basically to hunt down uh, Templars because it looks like they found a way to locate uh, precursor sites those who came before, if you will. And so you spend the first little bit of the game getting to know your assassin buddies, going out, and uh, getting Ben Franklin's help to try and find the location of these uh, precursor sites. And while you're looking, you get news like, oh, hey, yeah, we managed to find one of the sites, but uh, an earthquake happened, so we don't quite know what happened. But eventually, through some shenanigans and the assassination of uh, George Washington's older brother, you find out how to locate one of the sites, and one of them is in Lisbon, Portugal. And since Shay's the only fellow that's actually been to Lisbon before, he says, hey, I kind of know where it is. I'll go check it out. And uh, Achilles says, all right, go for it, dude. So he goes to Lisbon, finds it, but instead of finding a apple of Eden, he finds a weird sort of uh, polygon-looking piece of Eden. And uh, he j touches it, and it dissolves, and suddenly an earthquake happens, which levels Lisbon. Now, here's the funny thing about all this, like, with like the whole piece of Eden and those who came before, it's revealed that these are supposed to be not like apples, but like trees that basically hold tectonic plates together. But yeah. but it's so easy to break them apart just by literally touching this little thing will dissolve, 
and break it apart. Like that's a terrible security system. Like if you're using an anchor to hold giant tectonic plates together, maybe it should be a little harder to undo them. Yeah. Also, here's another fun part about all this. Literally to get into it, you have to like do this weird little puzzle thing in a in a cathedral in Lisbon to open it up. So that means the guys that made the cathedral knew about this place's existence and just nobody ever told. No, no, nobody ever talked. It's not like when Assassin's Creed Two where there was. Like, feasibly, you could assume that, okay, we're burying, like, a tomb in here. That makes sense. But nobody just questioned, like, the little floating uh, piece of Eden below there. Just, nah, not, not, not cause for concern at all. Well, anyway, let's get back to the story. Anyway, so, Lisbon is leveled. Shay feels incredibly guilty because, you know, all these people died because he was messing around with the piece of Eden. And so, about a month later, he makes it back to uh, the home base of the assassins, and he calmly goes up to Achilles to warn him. I'm just kidding. He, even after a month of contemplation, he busts into Achilles' rooms going, You made me slaughter innocent. You killed all these people. You made me do it. <laughs> and then Achilles is going, uh, like, like, Oh, maybe you screwed up. And, of course, Achilles calmly and rationally goes, Let's talk about this. Uh, I'm kidding. No, he goes, Get him out of here. So what's the next city you want me to smite? What happened in Haiti happened in Portugal. A great earthquake. Thousands dead next to your damned manuscript. This cannot be. Jay, a person cannot start an earthquake. A person meddling with these precursor machines could. You saw the box, Hope. The temple was filled to bursting with that kind of power. You made me slaughter innocents. How dare you? You defend him? Achilles sent me in there like Machandal sent his man in Haiti. What he the hell's knew. going on? Stop this! The operation was delicate. Perhaps you, you are shifting the earth itself. Who are you to decide what city falls next? Get him out of here. It's it's sort of this weird moment where it's like, hey, why don't you put to who just sit down, discuss what happened, say, hey, two earthquakes have happened now messing with these things. Maybe we shouldn't mess with them anymore. But no, uh, Shea refuses to calm down, and Achilles stubbornly refuses to accept any idea that maybe he shouldn't be messing with these things. And so, uh, Shea, uh, after getting kicked out, says, well, I'm not going to accept that. So he's going to go steal the uh, manuscript and the artifact to make sure that uh, the assassins can't locate any more temples so that they don't cause any more earthquakes. And in the process of stealing uh, them, uh, the assassins find out and go, hey, you're a traitor, and they shoot him in the back and he falls down and uh, almost drowns. Give back the manuscript, Shay. I'm sure Achilles- I cannot! I will not let this happen again! All those souls lost! One more hardly matters. Shay! <laughs> but, that's not where our story ends. He is saved by some Templars. Yep. Now, the Templars don't immediately tell them they're Templars because they're like, uh, yeah, we kind of know he's an assassin, but hey, we'll, we'll see where this goes. And so, basically, he's saved by one uh, Colonel Monroe, who was a Templar, and basically, he slowly convinces Shay to start working around with him, uh, basically saying, hey, I could use your help doing some good around New York and around the North Atlantic and the River Valley. You know, that sort of thing. And... Slowly but surely, uh, Shay realizes that the Templars, at least of this time period, are somewhat okay. They're they're nice. They're help. They're trying to help Ermit renewal. They're fighting crime that the assassins help prop up, which is kind of funny. Like, oh, why why are the assassins supporting that nonsense? That's that seems a little out of character for them. But th that'll be a common theme throughout this game. Yeah, we'll get to that. But as we go, but as we go through, slowly but surely, he starts to realize the Templars aren't as bad as he thought, or at least that's what he thinks. And eventually, the Templars are actually kind of cheerier than the Assassins in this game. But you go off to go save your buddy, uh, Colonel Monroe, who is actually a real historical figure. And uh, you save him at a fort, and at, at that point, the Assassins realize, wait, you're still alive? We thought you died. And they're like, uh, yeah, and you're working with Templars? I know this is awkward, man, but still. You live... Attack! So anyway, they go back, they they escape back to Albany. However, Colonel Monroe is eventually killed and the manuscript and stuff stolen. So Shay officially joins the Templars to stop 
the assassins for meddling with more of the pieces of Eden and causing more earthquakes. And so then you hunt down the rest of your former assassin buddies through various means, working along uh, Templars you never knew before and Templars you've met before. Hi, Haytham. Good to see you again. And eventually you chase them, you, uh, chase them down to another one of the precursor sites in the Arctic where shenanigans ensue and another earthquake happens, but thankfully no one dies because, well, you're in the Arctic. But then you kill your former best friend, Liam, and then you run out, and right as you're about to kill Achilles, you say, wait, no, we can't do this. Uh, he, he, if, we don't, if we don't kill him, I mean, if we do kill him, he won't tell the assassins to stay away from the temples. And so, Haytham agrees, just shoots him in the leg and cripples him, and says, stay at the homestead, don't bother anybody, and uh, all's well that ends well. Never forget what has happened here. I won't. Then afterwards, you go and uh, you kill the father of the protagonist of the next game, Arno, uh, Arno's father, Charles Dorian. But I'll get to more on that detail in Unity. Okay, so before we move on, like the grade we were going to give this was either going to be a B or a C. I would go so far as to give it a D, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. You can disagree. Because it's what goes on outside of the Animus that bothers me most. Okay, so here's the thing. In all the Assassin's Creed games up till now, what went on outside of the Animus, like the reason why your character, be it Desmond or whoever, went into the Animus was all for an end goal. In the first game, it was so that Warren Vidic and the Templars could find locations and locations of pieces of Eden. In Assassin's Creed 2, it's so that Desmond could learn how to be an assassin and find information about uh, what disaster happened before in brotherhood it was so that they could find the location of the resting places of pieces of eden and find a way to potentially save the world in assassin's Creed revelations it was to receive the it was to put desmond's mind back together after it had been fractured by brotherhood and in three it was so that they could locate the temple open all the gates to it and find a way to save the world from calamity and in black flag it was so that the um, templars could find the location of the observatory all of those solid good reasons i would say to have someone go into the animus and relive these lives you know they had a purpose they had a function that connected to the real world in this one i i shit you not this is this is not joke this is not hyperbole this is why the templars have gotten you because you're the same person from the black flag actually game. that's not 100 percent established your your character well, is called numbskull your, your character is called numbskull but it, whatever the case you're you're you don't have a face you're just a first person view but your job is back in absurdo entertainment which has been totally evacuated due to a, due to a hacking thing the Templars have taken over, and they want you to go in to relive Shay's memories. Why? Oh, is it to find those locations of those trees that hold the Teutonic plates together? Well, no, they don't really care about that. Is it um, to discover some secret that the Templars had hidden away? No, they don't really care about that. In fact, the Grand Master of the Templar says what he wants is to send a message to the Assassins. A message that says, we're better than you, and your kind will never win because you're weak and he has you send the footage that you obtained of shay cormac internationally to all the assassins bases and it somehow tricks them into thinking oh no another great purge oh no they found us out oh no. and i'm like this was your big plan this is what you had us do this is what you spent time energy and resources on to get us to send a message that was essentially yeah 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 that's essentially what this whole game amounted to you wanting to throw a dick measuring contest against the assassins and come out saying ha ha i'm not incontinent that's essentially what this was and i said okay no matter how great the game, no matter how interesting Shay, no matter how fascinating the concept, the whole premise of this story, the whole premise of going into this was essentially coming down to middle finger to the assassins. Ha 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 ha. I'm so much better. Ha 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 ha. And that, that tells me two things about the Templars. Number one, you're petulant children. You're, you're just children who just want to show off. And two, you have nothing better to do with your time. You should be spending time trying to find pieces of Eden. You should be spending time trying to find information. You should be finding time trying to hunt down the assassins. You should be trying to look at the hack that happened in your Abstergo Industries and try to find out who sent it and how. No, you're, essentially your whole plan is, let's send a message saying we're better than you. Like, <laughs> okay.
okay, this is what the Templars have the time to do. So I say D. I say D. Because even if the game is amazing, the reason you're doing it is for one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. I, I'm going with C. Why? Now, here's the deal. With, uh, like, the... I don't hate the concept, but I feel like they failed in the execution to uh, work it out. Like, with if you, uh, like, if you spruced up the scene where, like... If, Shay and Achilles have their falling out. Like, if Shay actually had come in and, like, was calm and collected and, like, he was trying to plea with Achilles not to go after more of these and Achilles, like, straight out refused, that might have been... Ha I think we could have had a little bit... I think they could have been handled a little bit better. But the overall concept of, like, an assassin, like, being forced to turn to the Templars to try and stop a greater calamity, I'm okay with that. Okay. I, I, I can get behind that. And even outside of the Animus, going out and you, you get to see... How the like how the Templars think, how they rationalize stuff. It's like they don't think. <laughs> no, 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 no. The 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 main guy Otto, he don't think. He's a dumbass. Like, he 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 a dumbass. And it's interesting to see like how they train. Like conversations with uh, Alex Cross. What's funny is there's a recording where Alex Cross straight up calls, uh, straight up calls uh Berg a a seacoast like, you're fucking stupid and I'm like well you're right on that one Cross you may be a schizophrenic moron but by golly you nailed that one on the head and it's interesting I, I, I found it was interesting just to sort of see like the Templars working behind the scenes like without as much of the veil over it so I was fine with that but I do agree the whole haha we're gonna send this video on you and that's gonna show we're better than you and, and you will choose order when your backs are against the walls like okay listen here you dumbass You've already done a great purge in 2000. Everything the assassins knew and loved was destroyed. They had to rebuild from the ground up. And actually, as you read in the things, they are actually starting to rebuild and starting to become a bit of a threat again under their new leadership. And so they've already, like, their, their Order 66, if you will, is in living memory. They are, they don't like if they saw the if like if I saw the like every like everyone when they see this like what the heck does this mean what's going on they don't they're not scared by it because they think oh gosh Shay's message it affects me so much they're uh, threatened by like okay what sort of psych op operation are they doing well my my, my thought is I mean my, my issue is this my issue is just this okay so I mean like I agree that I think the Shay's story could have been handled better but with the whole Templar thing. It's like, I don't know what you wanted to accomplish there when you have so much more you need to accomplish. You have so much more you need to do to stop the assassins to get the upper hand and you're not doing it. You're, you're, not, you're just sending out messages to say, I'm cooler than you, ha ha. Yeah. And I, I'm like, is that really how you want to spend your effing time? Yeah, well, it's... You could really explore the ideology of the... But here's the thing, the ideology doesn't even make sense because his argument is that when assassins are pushed into the corner, they will choose order themselves and i'm like you don't understand shay's story shay wasn't pushed into a corner shay was lied to and manipulated by the assassins he decided to run away from the assassins because he couldn't trust them anymore the templars were at a, were at a better point in their time where they were actually doing the right thing and so they're saying we're gonna um help you and he decided yeah the assassins need to go the way of the dodo at least at this point because they're doing all the wrong things and he became a templar it wasn't that he was backed into a corner and that assassins will naturally do that when backed into a corner it's that shay was in a unique position but Regardless, we've been on story long yeah, enough. I think, I think the final point is the message they could have established with it that would have made more sense is like that the assassins do more harm than good. That wouldn't have been a perfect, but it would have made more sense considering what we saw with Shay's story. Right. Well, okay. Now, overall, overall C for I'll the story. Low C. Low C. Fine C. But C nonetheless. All right, moving on to history. Let's let's not get too wild about this one. Oh, no. I'm, I'm very brief on this one. It takes place during the uh, Seven Years' War, the French and Indian War specifically, because, well, we're on the North American continent. Now, it's interesting because instead of in Black Flag, where you were just going around the Caribbean, around Cuba, the Yucatan, uh, and Jamaica, here you have two, well, three zones of operations. You have uh, the North Atlantic, which is right around Newfoundland. You have the River Valley, which isn't drawn particularly well, but they're trying to smush a whole lot in, so I'll forgive it. And, of course, uh, New York. Okay. Now, in what you see... Most of it's actually done pretty well. A lot of the characters that you work with are actually historical figures, like killing Lawrence Washington. He was already dying of a disease. He actually was about to die of tuberculosis. Your uh, first mate, in, uh, when you've joined the Templars, a uh, uh, Gist, he actually was a real-life explorer that actually knew uh, George Washington and saved his life on two occasions. So 
he was interesting. Uh, George uh, George Monroe, the colonel. You, some of you, if you've ever watched Last of the Mohicans, might recognize him. He is an actual historical figure. And he dies about, not quite the same way. He I don't think he died in a house fire, but he did die in Albany upon his return. So there's a lot of subtle things that actually do get correct. Of course, the overall course of the war, they do quite well. Overall, there's I couldn't find no real egregious examples of like historical meddling. I would say probably I'd say overall they get an A. All right, A is fair. A, a, a for history is fair. All right, let's move on to gameplay. Gameplay, I would say A tier. It rides the coattails quite a bit of Black Flag, and it's a fun game to play. However, there's one thing where it suffers from that uh, Black Flag. I think did slightly better and. This might surprise some of you. The reason it's not getting an S tier is because in certain cases it's actually too easy. One of the yeah. one of the benefits of being a Templar is you get the cool all the nice cool toys. Like you get an uh, air rifle that fires berserker darts, sleep darts, just like the blowgun, but also firecracker darts, and you get a grenade launcher attachment that launches berserk grenades, sleep grenades, and shrapnel grenades. And the thing is, you can clear through most stuff with this air rifle and these grenade attachments relatively easily. I and mean, once you start upgrading your uh, gear, and you like, you can carry like five of each type of grenades and fifteen of each type of darts. Most uh, places I infiltrate, I just ber made everybody go berserk, and then I came in and picked up what was left. And while it's still fun to do, it's not quite as engaging as within Black Flag, where the, there's not as much challenge with it. Is what I'm trying to say. No, I agree. It's it's it, it, it's not that it's not fun. I mean, the naval combat's still good. It, you'll still have a blast with the game, but it just isn't as challenging as the others. Out of all the Assassin's Creed games I've played, I think this is the one that people will probably breeze through the combat the simplest. And I think that that could be a part of the problem, personally, because the way I look at a game, while I don't want a game to be so incredibly hard, like Dark Souls level, where it's unforgiving and you just constantly die over and over, if a game has no challenge to it, where it just gives you the mechanics with which to just walk through everything... I feel like, like for example, I watch you play the final few missions. I don't think you drew your swords once. I don't remember you ever drawing your swords except for maybe like an air assassination. But all I really saw you doing was pulling out that air rifle and just dropping grenades and sleep darting or berserker darting people. And I'm like, while that looks fun and it can be entertaining, it doesn't take advantage of any other aspect of your toolkit, really. Because it's like, what's the point in the hidden blade or the point in the... In fact, the trailer! that You don't kill your mentor with the... Uh, with the hidden blade or your sword, you kill them with the gun. And it's like, I think that's what they were really trying to push, the gun. And I'm like, I don't know. That felt, I felt like it was a little too easy. But like you said, it rode the coattails of Black Flag well enough. I think it was just trying to go, hey, here's Black Flag, but if you were a Templar. I think that's essentially that, it's es That's essentially what it was. And it's not bad. It's still fun. Yeah. It, but it's just not as challenging as Black Flag was. Or some of its predecessors. All right. Well, okay. So, so, so far we've got a C, C a, a, and A. a. And so. now we're going to go into characters. And now characters overall is B. Right. Now, here's the deal. Let's start, start with Shay. Shay himself isn't necessarily a bad dude. I actually, I actually enjoyed him more so than, say, someone like Connor. And he's actually more enjoyable to listen to than Edward, at least until Edward gets to the very end. But the problem is, his rationale and reasoning seem kind of silly to me. Because this man, though he caused the earthquake, and I understand him being upset and morally outraged, because I would feel that too. But the thing is, the travel, the trip from the Atlantic, like from, from Portugal all the way back across the Atlantic, that's going to at least take a couple weeks, probably a month, maybe six weeks at most. So that's all this time he's had to contemplate to get his thoughts together, but immediately he busts into Achilles' office and just goes insane. Like, dude, settle down. Because if he had calmly sat down and explained to Achilles, hey, I think we're playing with fire here. That would have made that would have made uh that would have made probably the whole storyline a moot point. But he doesn't do that. But then it's surprising because after that point. He seems to be more calm, cool, and collected, which kind of goes against the hot-blooded fellow we saw earlier. And so he's not, un it's not, how should I put this? He's fun to watch, but... Stupid. Yeah, he's stupid. He's, he's fun to watch, but he's like his choices are stupid. He's a stupid person. 
He, he is a stupid person. He, he doesn't have... He can have his moments of charm, but he's not Edward Kenway. Yeah, he's not He's not Edward Kenway. I think that's what it comes down to. He, he has the gadgets and tools of James Bond, but with the intellect of a four-year-old. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. Basically pitching a tantrum when he comes home. You made me slaughter innocents! But what I find, but like you said, what's so funny is after he escapes the assassins, he's suddenly more calm and collected and not, not broken. You'd think the betrayal of everything he ever knew and loved would break a man, but nah, he's okay with it. <laughs> and then of course you got Achilles, who was also stupid, you know, like, he... Look, at, at no point did he go, okay, so the one in Haiti turned into an earthquake, the one in Lisbon turned into an earthquake, nah, coincidence is all around. And I know some people may say, oh, well, you know, he lost his family, he wasn't thinking clearly. There's a difference between grieving and being an abject moron. And also, if that was the real reason for it, I would have liked to have seen it a little bit more. Yeah, have us see him grieving, have us see him Cause, struggling. Because the only reference we get to it is just, like, uh, when you're sailing around with uh, Liam early on... They're just like, yeah, he's he's grieving, like like, like yeah, he's uh, he's in mourning. It was like, and he says like, yeah, he doesn't seem uh, like he's grieving. He seems angry, but even then, we don't see him being angry. But Achilles it is interesting to see him again and see him uh, old, see him older. Though I will admit, it is a little weird at the very end of the game when he's staring at it. And it's like, well, should we take it? And it's like, no. Shay was right. Like you know, if you just come to the conclusion, you could have saved us a game. <laughs> yeah, you just come to that conclusion earlier, but. The reason it's getting a B and not a lower score is because a lot of the other characters are actually interesting. The other assassins are kind of cool to listen to. I liked Hope. I liked Liam. I, the for what I saw of Kika Sawase, I kind of liked him. I liked the Templars you work with. Uh, George Monroe maybe a bit of a goody two shoes, but it was not, it was I thought they handled him well. Gist was a lot of fun. I actually like he's probably my favorite quartermaster of the games, just because of how goofy he, and sort of a drunken fool he can play. And uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of the other Templars. It was nice to sort of see them. You also get to interact with uh, Captain James Cook, and he's and he's fun to work with too, just because he starts to figure out that you're Templars but can't quite do it. Ben Franklin also makes an appearance, and he's n shown he's neither assassin nor Templar. He is completely oblivious to that going on, but he's still fun to have around. Well, also, let's take one more thing into consideration before we wrap things up. All right. The ending. When, you, when, when you're all wrapped up, the last thing you do is you go back into the Animus after sending out your scary message, Ooh. and you see how Shay's story kind of ends. Yes. Shay goes to France to the Palace of Versailles and kills one of the assassin leaders who is the father of Arno. Charles Dorian. Now, when killing Charles, wait for it, guys. Charles points out, all of your hard work in the Americas was over, was done in by Connor and his assassins. Their revolution undid your work in America. And his response is, well, then we'll just start a revolution of our own. And I'm like, you mean the French Revolution. So let's let's do a little compare and contrast. The American Revolution, which saw a clear end of a tyrant and the creation of a nation, versus the French Revolution, which some say is still going on. So, yeah, I'm going to say that doesn't help the Templar ideology very much. Uh, I'm going to say that actually makes you look pretty ass-numbingly stupid. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you there. That was kind of funny. But I think what's so um, telling, because this is what it all comes down to uh, for me, um, with all the other Assassin's Creed games, I felt like there was um, there was purpose behind it. You know, I felt like I learned a little something from each game, even the games I didn't like. Even Connor in his game taught me a little something. You know, it provided an interesting perspective. This one really didn't make me understand a perspective, and let me explain why. I think it would have been fascinating to explore the Templar ideology through this game. They really don't. They really don't explore the Templar ideology through this game. Most of it is just the assassins are doing bad things now, so the Templars are the good guys by comparison. Yeah. And, but we don't see the Templars implementing any of their... Like, for example, what's the whole Templar ideology? It's that mankind can't run itself without leadership, and therefore we're going to control mankind for their own good because mankind can't be trusted to do it themselves. At what point in the game... And maybe I'm wrong. I didn't see all the gameplay. Maybe I'm wrong, but... At what point in the gameplay did you actually put that into practice? Did you ever install a person into power who was going to lead people? Did you try to control people? Did you try to control the populace? Or did you spend most of the time 
trying to um, uh, free people or free people from what they thought was tyranny. Is it not the case that in this game, they actually reverse the ideologies of the two sides to suit what you were used to for Assassin's Creed? Well, they don't even really reverse the ideologies. It's just the ideologies don't uh, play a thing unless you're outside the animus. Because the thing is, you could argue the like th this has actually confused me, and this is why the story didn't have a prayer of going past C, is because the assassins support the French wholeheartedly, right? And the assassins and the Templars support the British almost wholeheartedly, and it's kind of just like why? Yeah. Well, it's like like because the assassins' ideal is freedom. What freedom will you get with the French as opposed to with the British? What and if the Templars want the British because they are going to, they have a better chance of providing order to the continent. Then why in the third game do you work so hard to get rid of the British? Because, and this is the thing that confused me with three after playing Rogue because they said like, well, we don't want anything to do with the British or their idiot king. But you work so hard to have the Brit give the British control of the entire continent, and then you could use the and you have such control of the British government, you could use that as the order to control the North American continent. It makes very little sense for you to suddenly switch and go against the British, at least. And so that's why overall rating calculated, we could have rounded this up to possibly be A tier, but we're keeping it in B tier. Because it is a fun game to play, but the story not only is confusing in and of its own, not necessarily unenjoyable, but it's it hurts the consistency of two Assassin's Creed games. Yes. Both 3 and later in Unity 2, because here's the thing. There's a big question. Shay is such an effective fighter, it begs the question, how come Haytham never said, hey man, come on back, Connor's starting to cause too many problems, I need someone who can actually help me take care of him. Or, did, did we never see, like, I played through Unity once before. I never, I don't remember Shay, because I was, I remember going through Unity waiting to fight Shay. I was like, all right, I can't wait to fight Shay. That Shay's fight's going to be so much fun. But we never, but I don't believe I ever saw him. Maybe he was in a DLC mission or something. But well, the thing I is, I mean, I mean, you're right. That's one of the big problems that I had with uh, Shay as a character. He's so badass. Why didn't he ever show up to fight Connor? They could have had a great back and... Well, then again, Connor was never good at defending the ideology of the assassins. To be so fair, neither is Shay at the Templar. And, and that's why... That was my biggest problem with Shay! Oh, we could have had a stupid fight. Stupid fight. Stupid fight. Stupid fight. Stupid fight. But just have the two fight each other. That'd be interesting. And then in Unity, I thought he'd be the big bad guy you have to fight. He's saying, we'll start the revolution of our, of our own. And I'm like... Are you going to lead it? No, I'm just going to keep killing people. It's what I do. It's like, oh. again, he's he's the stupid. J j go and check something real quick. Maybe 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 he is referenced in Unity. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe. I don't think he ever was. Uh, let's see. Uh, just um, legacy, tr journey to France, life aftermath, and death. Okay, Shay trained his son and free running in Eagle Vision. Simple order. Shay remained a Templar, just never having betrayed the Templar Order. Yeah, he never... But it doesn't establish, like, anything, like, no, so he wasn't in Unity. It's like, why would you not have him in Unity? Like, he would have made a great villain! Why, why is it that Assassin's Creed has this really bad habit of, um, introducing a really cool character and then not doing shit with them? Hi, oh, hi, Chow Yun, when did you get here? Um, but regardless of that, so we gave it a B, um... The gameplay was a lot of fun, I would say. The world is engaging. Shay and some of the other characters can be kind of fun to see. But... Uh, I'm sorry. I I think it's crap. I, th I, th I, mean, I, think, I think the worst part of it is not only... Is, like it's, I don't think it's crap, per se, but it just could have been so much better. It could have been better, and they could have used it to do something. Yeah. I, see, that, that's what I like about this. I'll give this game one piece of credit. It didn't involve the Isu very much. It, it mostly just kept them out, which I like. Yes. The problem is, what I like about Assassin's Creed is the battle of two worldviews. The battle of, oh, you know, we support um, freedom versus we support tyranny because both have their positives and negatives. And we can see these two positives and negatives played out in the game or in the world throughout history but they don't do that they don't have that they just basically say okay this game you're playing is the templars oh that's cool so we're going to be fighting for tyranny not really what yeah basically you're the good guys now because we need to reverse the roles and i'm like what yeah and the thing is what's hilarious is i remember reading about rogue before it came out 
and they were, the developers were saying it's like well we always wanted to be the the assassins and templar uh war to be less black and white and more gray looking at the evils the borgia did and i'm just going that was supposed to be gray territory you, you want the assassin's creed battle to be less black and white well no 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 hold on hold on i want to take that for a second you wanted to be less black and white and more gray what was gray about anything the assassins did in this game most of the assassins did awful awful things they, they attacked they attacked innocents they were using chem, making chemical weapons to use on the populace it's ridiculous and then here, here's the funny thing it's like well the templar war between the assassins it's meant to be more gray what's gray about enslaved all of humanity with a piece of Eden being shot up in a satellite. How's that not evil villain stuff? Like, listen, I don't mind playing. Like, listen, I don't mind playing the villain. That's fine. I actually think if they had actually gone full ham with that, it actually would have been better. But don't, don't don't sit here and pretend to me the Templars are like could possibly be the good guys. No. Anyway, um, I think that about sums it up. I think about sums up. It's it's a solid B. It's it's worth a playthrough. Ironically, I enjoyed this one more than I did Unity, but then again, it's been a while since I played Unity, so we'll... But that is next, so... That is next. So here's how it's going to go next time, guys. Lark is going to start playing the Unity. I'm going to pick up Syndicate. We're going to play through those. Unity will obviously be next. We'll go into that, and then we'll do Syndicate right after. Um, Brace yourselves, guys, because if memory serves, neither of these games are going to get high marks. But that'll be for then, and this is now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in our next video. Take care. Have a good one, guys.